Over the past few weeks on my YouTube channel, I've been posting a number of polls to gauge interest in possible topics for a live training session related to video game development. And after narrowing the topic down, the winning topic was how to break your habits of object-oriented programming. Now, I think this is going to be a really great choice for our first live training session because it's not necessarily related to any specific platform or technology but it's more talking about data-oriented design as a whole. This is really going to help you get into the mindset of you know, thinking about ways to solve problems in a data-oriented manner. And this is really going to help lay down the foundation for you so that um, you, know, you can really think like a data-oriented programmer. And when you do sit down to write some data-oriented code, you don't fall back into some of those old habits of object-oriented programming that you've picked up um, over how long you've been developing with that. Because when you do this, you end up writing code that's structurally incomplete compatible with data-oriented design, which doesn't allow you to take full advantage of the performance gains that you can get from data-oriented design. And it's really just going to lead to a lot of headaches in the long run. You know, when I started first experimenting with Unity ECS and trying to learn it, um, the source of most of my frustration came from the fact that I was trying to force my old object-oriented programming habits that I picked up over the years into Unity ECS, which is a data-oriented design-based paradigm. And while I was eventually able to write some code that technically worked after many hours of fighting with the compiler, it wasn't really that much more performant than it would have been if I just wrote the program with regular Unity. Not to mention that the code was a complete mess because I ended up just implementing a bunch of workarounds in order to get my code to run. To put it succinctly, I was trying to force a square peg through a round hole. It wasn't really until I shifted my mindset into thinking in a data-oriented way that I could architect my projects in this manner without fighting with the compiler and I'm actually able to take advantage of the massive performance benefits of data-oriented design. Now, because it is so important to shift your mindset to think like a data-oriented programmer and break away from all your previous habits of object-oriented programming, I'm putting on a live training session to help you learn about the key mindset shifts you need to make to think in a data-oriented way so you can avoid the same mistakes that I did when I was starting out. So what is this live training session all about? Well, for starters, this live training session is actually going to be held this weekend on Saturday, November 13th at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, to attend, you just need to sign up using the URL tmg.dev slash OOP dash habits. Of course, I will have that link available in the description as well as the pinned comment of this video. Uh, but the live training session is going to be an hour long session. And we're gonna be talking about the key differences between object oriented programming and data oriented design. Then I'm actually going to be going over five mindset shifts you need to make in order to switch your thinking from object oriented programming to data oriented design thinking. Um, we're also going to be going over three extra considerations that you need to make when you are making something with data-oriented design principles uh, that you wouldn't necessarily need to do using object-oriented programming. And then I'm also going to be going over a few practice exercises you can use to hone your skills as a data-oriented programmer. And I'm going to be throwing in a couple bonuses for everyone who signs up. Uh, so at the end of the live training session, there is going to be a live Q&A portion. So if you do have any questions for me um, on basically anything that we went over in the training session, talking about shift shifting your mindset from thinking like an object-oriented programmer to a data-oriented programmer. Um, you know, we can go over any of that stuff. Also, everyone who signs up will have access to the full recording of the training session, um, so you can review it later, or if you can't make it for the actual uh, live training session at that specific time, you can always watch it back uh, later on. And I will also will be giving you the slideshow presentation as well as my notes that I'll be teaching during this live training session. And finally, I will be providing some links to additional resources if you do want to um, you know, continue looking into some things after the live training session. So if you are interested in attending, be sure to sign up as soon as possible because registration will close as soon as the live stream starts. Again, the live stream is going to start this Saturday, November 13th at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Once again, the URL to sign up is just TM tmg.dev slash OOP dash habits that again will be linked in the description as well as the pinned comment of this video. And I'm really excited for this live training session. I think it's going to be really beneficial to anyone who might be starting out with uh, data oriented design, whether you're um, experimenting with Unity ECS or some other ways of doing data oriented design. 
Again, this isn't necessarily going to be specific to any one thing, um, but because I do have a lot of experience with Unity's entity component system, I may be talking about some you know, examples of things like that and kind of how it applies in those situations. Of course, this is going to be helpful to anyone who maybe has been experimenting with Unity ECS or some other data-oriented design stuff. Um, and you do kind of find yourself implementing some of these old object-oriented programming habits and you're kind of finding it hard for yourself to break out of those things. So again, I'm gonna be really helping with those kind of mindset shifts you need to make uh, to get yourself thinking in the correct way so that you can structure your program to most fit in line with the data oriented design principles. And this is also going to be helpful for people like me who just kind of want, you know, all the resources. You just want all the learning, no matter, um, you know, what level you feel yourself are at, you know, it's always good to kind of go back and learn kind of some of the fundamentals. Again, I think this is really just going to be helpful for us to kind of, you know, all be on the same page so that in the future we can talk about some, you know, more interesting and complex things. Um, but this is just really going to be a good, you know, foundational way to get everyone thinking sort of the same way before we move forward. And then real quickly, I just want to go over a couple of things about what this live training session is not going to be. So first of all, this is not going to be, you know, a let's bash object oriented programming presentation. I'm not going to be talking about, you know, why object oriented programming is bad. Um, I may be bringing up about, you know, some of the potential flaws that it has, especially as our program begins to scale. I'm not going to be, you know, out here saying that object oriented programming is bad. I mean, I'm fully aware that, you know, plenty of games have been made using object oriented programming, and that's still going to be the case for a number of years. But I will be talking about the advantages that data oriented design gives us and just again, helping us shift our mindset to think in a data oriented way um, so that we can better structure our programs in that way. Also, I should just be clear that this is not going to be a live tutorial session. I'm not going to be showing you any specific implementations of anything. Um, this is just going to be more of a theory to help you get in the mindset to think like a data data oriented programmer so that when you do sit down to write data oriented code, you do have the correct mindsets and you're gonna kind of, you know, avoid some of the headaches that come with um, potentially forcing object oriented programming into a data oriented program. So again, I'm not going to be like going step by step through some specific implementation details of anything, um, but I will be talking about how these principles relate to Unity's data oriented technology stack and their entity component system and how we can kind of start to incorporate these principles uh, maybe in a little bit more of a concrete way. And I may have a few snippets of code from here to there, um, but again, it's just not going to be, you know, a step-by-step -step walkthrough to, um, you know, implement some specific feature or anything like that. So anyways, that's just gonna be about it for today's video. Again, I did just want to announce that I am going to be hosting this live training session this weekend. Again, it is Saturday, November 13th at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Of course, you can sign up using the website tmg.dev slash oophabits. Once again, that is linked in the description below, as well as in the pinned comments for this video. If you do have any questions for me on this live training session, feel free to ask me down in the comment section below or just reach out to me through some other means. So anyways, that's just gonna be about it for today's video. I'm really excited for this live training session and I've been putting together a really cool presentation for it that I think um, if you are interested in these topics, you are really going to find very valuable. Um, so go ahead and sign up for this training session and I'm excited to see you there but I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.